Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here, and today Larry Bundy is joining me over Skype to discuss the recent Rare Replay game for the Xbox One. Now Larry, uh, now we, we had a chat a couple of weeks ago on your channel about the recent Batman Arkham Knight game. Yes, um, I don't think we have to worry about giving away spoilers this time though. No we don't, no. <laughs> no. These game, most of these games are you know, over, well, nearly 30 years old. Um, but was this uh, Rare Replay game something you'd been, well, were you expecting it when they announced it at E3? Was it just a uh, big surprise to everyone? Well, I, I think it was quite a surprise because it is a Microsoft company now and they're probably more likely to sort of release these eventually individually. So you're probably probably looking about a good three, four times the price you'd actually, you actually pay for the game in the end. So. That's right, because once I got hold of it and when you put in, put in the game, it wants to install all the 360 some kind of HD upscaled versions. Obviously, you know, with uh, Perfect Dark and um, some of the later releases from Rare. Mm. It came to like, I think it was like 42 gigabytes, something like that. It was. It is well, it's all down to the uh, Xbox 360 games at the end, isn't it? Because they're like eight, five to eight gigs each. Yeah, I know, I know, I couldn't believe it. I was just sitting there waiting for over an hour for everything, everything to install. Once it was all ready, and uh, I sort of started playing through some of the games, but uh, many of them I'd not played before because I had a Spectrum as a kid, but I was only kind of given one in the early 90s. So most of these games by Rare, well, it was under a different name, wasn't it? Ultimate Play the Game. That's right. Yeah. Actually, before that, they were called ACG. I forgot this. Yeah, I forgot what the initials stand for, but they, uh, yeah, so there's some really, really old, uh, rare games on there. I remember you saying, because we had a chat about this a couple of weeks ago, and um, you, I remember you saying that Ultimate Play the Game, a lot of their titles were quite expensive on the spectrum. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, well, when they first come out, they were like seven to ten pounds each, which was like a ridiculous amount of money in the early 80s for games. Like the, the high. The big budget games like five pounds back then. What, what, what most probably things like by Ocean Software. Uh, yeah, well, this is in before Ocean, really. Uh, they've been around for quite some time since the early eighties. I see. Because it was Jetpacks from nineteen eighty three, so that's that's what I presume that's their first ever, their first ever title. Uh, well, if you kept, no, um, they did actually make some arcade games beforehand uh, for various Japanese companies. Uh, have you heard of a, a company called... Uh, have you ever heard of an old arcade game called uh, Blueprint? No, no, not at all. Oh, basically, it's basically like Pac-Man, except you have to uh, raid uh, houses in this street to uh, build this contraption to stop your uh, girlfriend from being attacked by a, a giant raisin man <laughs> thing. I don't know. <laughs> but, the, but, the, but those arcade titles will never re-released were they? Uh, they, they were they, uh, come out on the uh, come out on the uh, Commodore 64 and the Atari oh so. okay but like uh, it's nothing to do with them uh, this was uh, long before then but the first games they published themselves were for the Spectrum ah uh, okay yeah, stuff like uh, Jetman I think is it Jetman or Jetpack was it's the Jetpack, first one yeah. yes that was the first one they ever actually released now because I was checking uh, Rare's Wikipedia earlier on and I didn't realise they'd produced nearly 120 games and then you kind of reminded me um, before this Skype conversation that um, a lot of their titles were were licensed ones. Well that's how they jumped onto the market of doing console games is uh, very few people are willing to sort of let you make your own game back then so the easiest thing to jump on the bandwagon is just make licenses and they just made a hell of a lot of licenses. I mean stuff from uh, WWF uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Beauty Juice, loads of stuff. Because tons of NES titles, wasn't it? Because they never, I don't think they ever did anything for the Sega, did they? Mega Drive or Master System. Well, their games are ported. Uh, you can get uh, Battle Toes, Snake Rattle and Roll, and RC Pro Am for the Mega Drive or Genesis. Right. Uh, so, yeah, they were released, but they weren't released by them, and that's probably why they're not on the list. Do you think the selected titles for this package? Where do you think were, were the best ones they'd produced? Or do you think there's some titles on there that are missing that you wanted to play again? Uh, well, I am quite surprised that there's no 16-bit games on the list at all. I was surprised by that because I, you know, 8-bit micro spectrum games, that's cool, fair enough. Then These are classic titles. And then you've got a large chunk of NES titles, which I've never played before. I've only, well, I only played Battletoads, kind of the Super Nintendo version. There was obviously similarities to the one for the NES, but they've but it was Battletoads versus um, something else, wasn't it? Uh, Double Dragon. That's right, yeah. 
I didn't know about these titles. I mean, there's, there's quite a few interesting like RC Pro and Cobra Triangle, the sort of isometric driving games, which I always have a fondness for because I was it's, well, I used to love playing um, rock and roll racing on a Super Nintendo. Oh yeah, yeah, very much rock and roll racing. So it? yeah, so it was just like, well, it's easy to play, pick up. I won a mountain bike on television playing that game. Did you? I did. Yes. Was that on Games World? Uh, that was head to head. Head to head. God. Yes. What channel was that on? Children's Channel. A children's channel. The children's channel. The children's channel. Not any, ch not, not any old children's channel. Entertainment for kids. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at their list of games they made, and there's a big old pile of random rubbish. I mean, the licenses are going all over the place. They even made a, a game based on that card, uh, the card game Tarot. The tarot. It's not a card game. They do tarot readings. That was one of their games, Taboo. God. Uh, loads of uh, American football games, uh, basketball, California games. Roger Rabbit, they made a game of. Uh, Double Dare, do you remember that? I remember Double Dare, yeah. Yes. Uh, Captain Ivan, Iron Man, Stuart, Super Off-Road. But there's quite a few uh, interesting omissions uh, from the uh, NES line. Like none of the uh, Iron Sword games are on there. Oh, that's a shame. Because obviously they had to put Battletoads on there, which... It's, Battletoad seems to be a game that's constantly, about, yeah, I think, yeah, constantly played by every kind of popular video, you know, YouTuber who plays video games. There's always oh, yeah, Battletoads, 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 Battletoads. I think it's some sort of passage of right for Let's Players <laughs> that I have to do at least one Battletoads. It is. When I put the when I put the disc in, I think everything was all updated and downloaded. I went straight to Battletoads Arcade. I thought that was did fantastic. Yes. That, was, that was published by EA, did you know? Really? Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know EA got into the arcade. No, they market. did. Um, if you go in there now, they've got a load of uh, like Need for Speed arcade machines now. So they're still around in the arcades. Oh, a very small market though. Uh, very small. I think they have to sort of do uh, co-ops with uh, Sega now to do stuff like that. Because the Battletoads arcade was something I never saw uh, when I was younger. But I never saw it because I've, I've only kind of seen it. Well, played it a couple of times via emulation, but can they play it properly now? It's uh, it's actually quite an interesting kind of side scroller where you've got basically a platform element thrown in. By level two, you're sort of on this sort of um, snowy backdrop, but then you've got it actually it's really difficult. I mean, the difficulty level is, it seems quite quite well, equal. It's an arcade game. They, they, they don't care. Have if you're having fun or not, they just want your bloody money. Don't they? So. <laughs> no, I had, to, I had to fight this kind of end level boss with this like snake head. It took forever to kill him. God, it drove me nuts. The interesting little feature they've added to all these games, well, I presume a lot, mostly the retro ones, but not the 360 ones, is the. No. You can reverse your progression. You can, you can rewind. rewind. Yeah. yeah, if you've made an error. That is quite clever, actually. I'm surprised that no emulator's really done that before. I mean, you can up save states and that. But yeah. That's actually proper rewinding. Yeah, I thought that was a really. Complete with that uh, old extra. VHS. Yeah, yeah. I think I think most people now can actually complete Battletoads. <laughs> you know, yeah. just re if you you know if you're doing that sort of level where you're on that sort of ho hover bike thing, you can just kind of re rewind your progress and do it again and do it again. Yeah. I'm surprised that DSP never done it for any of his Let's Plays. It's quite hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he has. I don't know. Um, but I'd probably edit out all the fluffs and say, look, I've done it in one go. <laughs> Trick everyone. Um, but what was probably the, the most interesting title, though, for you, Larry? On this the package? most interesting title that I never played before was Digger T Rock, the NES game. I had a go at that. I didn't particularly like it. Oh, I really liked it. Did it's sort of, it's. Uh, have you ever played Spelunky? No, no, no. no oh, okay. Yeah. It's always like it's always like on budget for like various systems and that. But it felt like that. I mean, that's a bit. I liked all the digging stuff because I never had it as a kid. Um, I always saw it in Woolworths bargain bins. It was like absolute bargain bin fodder, but I, the artwork put me off, and I always um, had a chance to buy it. I bought Marble Madness instead, <laughs> which was also made by Rare, coincidentally. <laughs> I, I actually had a, had a few goes on uh, Gun Fright. I thought that was really interesting, actually. For, it's quite interesting. For a specky uh, game. I mean, the detail, for the time, you know, the detail of the of the animation and sort of obviously the, the level design, I mean, it's actually quite unique. I, it seemed with them charging a little bit more for their titles I, th I suppose it's quite justified at the time they were the ones who invented that isometric view or video ga of games were they yes they were I mean, um and every because obviously the batman game was isometric back in the time it the was it was yeah it was a rip off of uh their uh that, what, that saber game. wolf or something or not say not saber wolf uh i'm not underworld or the other i've forgotten what, what the 3d attack or something 
Not attic attack, that's a top down one. Did you say Night Law? It could be Night Law, yes. That's from 85, so Batman's from. Wasn't Batman from 80, 86? It could have been. That was the first ever Batman game, did you know? It was. It was like the Bat hyphen man, wasn't it? Something like that. It was the first ever uh, non DC licensed property to have third parties do the artwork as well. Oh. Yes. I mean, because every time. I think every couple of months, Retro Gamer always cover that game. It's always kind of like the, oh, they would do, yeah. the same interview with the guy. I'm like, haven't you done this already? I've got like five <laughs> issues of this in my, in five issues my collection. Or moan about the bloody Amstrad or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I, some of my friends who also have an Xbox One, um, that, most of them were quite desperate to play Blast Corps again. Blast Core. Blast Corps. Is it Blast oh. Corps? It says Blast... It's spelled, it's, it's spelled Corks, but you're supposed to spell it, uh, pronounce oh, it. Oh, it's Blast Corps. I believe. I do apologise. I believe, people. because I got I got moaned at once for mentioning um, uh, Contra, uh, Blah, uh, Hard Corps. It's called Card Corps, but everybody's moaning at me. It's, it's Hard Corps. It's an American thing, anyway. Okay. But yeah, but it's supposed to be pronounced Core, not Corps. Oh, it's a silent P. Yeah. <laughs> the silent pronounced P, yeah, and an S. But what's actually quite interesting seeing these N64 games because the N64 had such a crappy video output, and I think obviously most oh. people most people either get an S video cable or mod it for RGB. But seeing Blast Cores and um, Killer Instinct Gold was actually uh, surprising how how good the graphics or graphics were. Because um, uh, I because I got the Killer Instinct sort of season one and two mm. for the Xbox One, and you get Killer Instinct Two Arcade. And I was sort of trying to compare the two between uh, the arcade and the N64 version. And the N64 one does like, actually does actually look a bit more cleaned up. I mean, the backgrounds are 3D, but obviously don't think are as detailed as the arcade one. But it's actually surprisingly quite a faithful conversion. It is. Well, it's, it was supposed to be an original uh, Nintendo 64 game, wasn't it? It was running on Nintendo 64 hardware version. Uh, yeah, but I, the I first think, arcade. I, yeah, the first arcade was, but I didn't know that if the second one was. I'm not sure what the arcade. All right, no, I think it was beyond that now. Yeah, because it took so long to come out the Nintendo 64. They released a sequel in the meantime, so they just amalgamated the two into Killer Instinct Gold. That's right. And apparently, Killer Instinct Two was supposed to come out on Super Nintendo at one point. Really? It's like some sort of... But by that point, the Super Nintendo was probably on its last legs, so. though. Well, they still release games for it. I mean, if you think about it, there's a bigger base of people who own consoles before it's died than there is. I mean, that's why uh, you always see a Grand Theft Auto game out just before the end of a console's life, because there's more... And they also sell so well. They do. But, that's what I think EA is, have taken, well, took advantage of, didn't they, with the with the FIFA games? Because mm. there's always kind of one still knocking on the PS2, like just before. Yeah, 2014 was the last one. Jesus. With some of the uh, newer titles, I mean, I was, I never, I never played Perfect Dark Zero because I heard how bad it was. Oh, um, that was like, it's one of those games you, they just can't give away for free, is it? It's. Well, I got it. I got it because it was like one of the only two games. That are out available for launch, and it was that or and condemned for the Xbox 36. And I remember playing it over Christmas, uh, no, over New Year's night, and hear the fireworks in the background playing the game online. It's a bloody terrible game online. It's uh, it's so underpowered the guns that uh, you need uh, if you've got a sniper rifle, you need two headshots to kill someone. Oh, so the, it, the guns are so sort of way too. If they made the guns a lot more powerful, it'd been a bit more fun. I mean, it, it doesn't actually look like an Xbox 360 game. I mean, but it's not an Xbox 360 game. They just upscaled the graphics. That's all they done. It was originally supposed to be an Xbox game. On oh, Xbox, oh, the original one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it gets confusing now. We can't say and Xbox One And also, it was supposed to be a, sort of an anime-looking game as well. But they, ch Microsoft said people don't like anime, so they made them make it look a bit more realistic and. So I think half the graphics were done, so that's why they got that funny sort of everybody looks like they made out of plastic in the game. Oh, because yeah, when I was playing it through, it's, it is obviously a very clunky, very first, floaty, very yeah, floaty, very clunky first-person shooter. Mm. But if anyone listening listening's got a you know the surround sound mix is incredible, really good sound design. Oh, so that, that yeah. was like wow, that's really impressive. But everything else was a bit of a turkey. Everything with rare and music, that's really astounding. Yeah, yeah, they they're always nail it when it comes to music. What do you think of, of Rare now? Do you think they've kind of lost their charm and spark from I the past? Think, I think from basically uh, after the failure of uh, Ratchet, not Ratchet, uh, Nuts and Bolts, uh, Banjo-Kazooie, uh, I think uh, Microsoft put them in the doghouse for a while, saying, you know, obviously you can't do anything. But they're coming back now. They're that, that, doing that pirate game. Oh, yeah, that was announced at E3. Yeah, that it? looks quite interesting. It does yeah. look very interesting, but it's it's that sort of very colourful kind of 
I suppose you could say it's got kid friendly um, appeal to it. You know, it's mm. it's. I mean, that's what a lot of their newer titles all seem to have that kind of very bright and colourful, which is fine. A video game should should always retain that sense of uh, colourfulness, but it, and all the characters have goggly eyes. Yeah, yeah. That was actually the weird thing is when you play the game, you can unlock these uh, videos, can't you? And you're yeah. sort of making of, and that was one thing they kind of brought up, which kind of what makes a uh, what's unique about rare titles. I would like to see him go in a different direction, sort of these more of these kid-friendly games. I mean, a lot of uh, their titles were Kinect titles, weren't they? Uh, they were. Well, that's why they'd probably be moved on to doing these other things, either disband the company or make them do other things, because I think they are slowly abandoning the Kinect because nobody likes it. So if they've got nothing, no games for them to make, they want them. Let's just let them make these games that made them famous. Yeah, yeah. It's But I, I think the problem is, I mean, with Rare being such a popular company especially doing the sort of n64's heyday um a lot of the people that made things like donkey kong country or goldeneye have left the company they've moved on they're doing their own thing now aren't they? yeah, yeah. And stuff stanford it's, brothers have left as well people actually created the company that's the thing with all video game companies isn't it i mean some of the best folks at, at sega back in its day made some of the best titles of all yeah. left ages ago so i know you're, you're going by the name rather than then who's involved it's yeah and it's i think it's a big misconception with video games uh nostalgia that it's not the company that makes it, it's the people who make it so no matter where they are that's where you should look not the company's name yeah they might own the licenses but the people are the ones who created it it was like the, like the folks who you know who worked on golden i went and did um was it time splitters wasn't it time splitters and that's a fantastic game everybody was waiting for a bloody fourth one of that for years yeah yeah so i mean because it, it had that golden eye appeal to its design didn't it time splitters 2 was essentially golden eye 2 that was far more golden eye than perfect dark yeah yeah definitely yeah. i had that on the gamecube i thought it was fantastic. i had that's the best version that was, was it yeah oh, i was lucky then <laughs> I think the big glaring omission uh, that everybody's looking at is uh, for a rare collection, why isn't Goldeneye on the list? Uh, there's actually an article I read, and the reason that Rare said is because they had a choice of what games to put on the list, and they said that Goldeneye wasn't rare enough. What? That's rubbish. I can't. I, That's I not know. true. I know. It's licensing. Why can't they just admit it? Yeah, they yeah. Said, they said because it's a movie license, it didn't feel like Rare's creative talent on there but that's in the day that's the one title most people really know, want to play that's, that's... if this if this package had golden eye on it i think even people would just buy the console just to get that game again exactly that's it... even more so if they put it online exactly and if it was like you know obviously it would be i would presume done in the way of perfect dark with it being an hd upscale i would presume i don't think they'd just I, i'm not sure if they'll just do a straight Copy well, they uh, the Xbox 360 remake of Perfect Dark, they did port a lot of the maps. That's Golden. Yeah, that's what my friend Richard said, because he was playing it online, and you got some of the classic levels on GoldenEye. Facility. Yeah. Love that level. Oh, everybody loves that level. Sticking landmines in the back of the doors. On the wall yeah, proxy mines. Come in here, yeah. mate. They come charging Find, and blow up. the toilets of proxy mines. You can't lose, can you? <laughs> and you lose, well, you can't, the only thing you do lose is friends. but <laughs> If you're playing it online, doesn't matter. No. <laughs> Just get, wind up some, you know, twelve-year-old yeah. kid. You'll get her racial abuse, whatever you are. <laughs> I mean, Larry, would you would you recommend this this? Uh, I do because it's so collection. dirt cheap. You're paying like less than a pound per game, really. You are, you are. I mean, for th wait. thirty games. I mean, you can't really argue. I mean, I've, it's... I've seen it for fifteen quid now, so that's like fifty p a game. Yeah, so you can't go wrong, bargain. even if they're half of them you don't play. I don't think there's one title on there which I'm like, I was desperate to own this package just for that game. It was. I, I think there's a bit of a cop out from sticking the sequels on there. I didn't like that. Yeah, because you got RC Pro um, Two as well. On there, yeah, you got RC Pro Two. You've also got uh, Perfect Dark that. Zero. Well, that's a prequel, but no, that's completely different. Now, I meant it's the same generation. It's just slightly different for a sequel. Oh, Viva Pinata 2 as well. Trouble in Paradise. I didn't see the point of having two of them on there. Yeah, I mean, it, that's... Uh, I think, especially think they, when there's so, other ga so many other games that they omit, omitted. Because most people would be picking up for for the retro stuff. I don't think anyone would be like desperate to get it because they've got you know well, Pinata 1 and 2 on it. Well, chances are they probably already are. If they wanted the games, they'd own them already. I mean, they're not that old. You can pick them up for like two, three quid from any old shop. It is for the older stuff, and there's quite a lot of omissions. Like I say, 
Uh, I'm surprised Battle Maniacs isn't on the list, which was the Super Nintendo sequel to Battletoads. That is a glaring omission as well. Yeah, they could have they could have shoved it on there. But do you think maybe they, they would think, oh, we've got three Battletoad games on there? Do you think they would have jettisoned Battletoads Well, they've got Arcane? two bloody RC Pro-Am games, and they've got two bloody Viva Piñata games. So I don't think they're that fussy about what goes. And yeah, it's a Blu-ray disc. It's like 30 to 50 gigabytes, that thing. Yeah. I think they could put a couple of extra NES games on there. <laughs> well, yeah, you like two megabytes, those games are, anyway. Not even that. I think that you're <laughs> counting in kilobytes, most of them. I think the only thing that bolts it out is that rewind feature. Yes, I think so. I mean, with the you know with the emulation, I think it's actually really impressive, isn't it? It's actually very faithful to sort of... Oh, it's absolutely perfect. You can even, um, if you push in the right thumbstick, you can even put scan lines on your screen, which That's I right. think is a complete pile of shit. I hate, I hate having scan lines. Why, why? It's an American thing, isn't it? Because they've got crappy televisions. They want to make their nice HD 4K bloody television look like arse. <laughs> so they have, they have to stick lines all over the bloody thing. No, I don't want that. Or you, or I like, like a nice clear picture. I spent years and I spent hundreds of pounds uh, with scar things and stuff like that and getting up scales and stuff like that to make the picture look good. And now you want to go back and make it look shit again and stop it. <laughs> so, well, it's like those ones where they try and create the arcade screen and like kind of bow the screen, oh, yeah. it? like bends it round. And, like, and the slight sort of uh, bloom. Almost. Yeah, I don't like that sort of CRT. I don't thing. like it. No, no. Let's keep it like how it's supposed to when you get it. You know. It's... I mean, the only thing I, the only only compromise I like is having a picture stretched to fit sixteen by nine. I don't like having things at the side. Oh, you like it? You don't like it being squared off in the middle? No, I like a, I like the full picture. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, the, I don't like it when the, no, I don't like it when the, the image is stretched, though. Well, no, I don't mean stretch. I just extend the, the horizon. Oh, it's I not see. that hard to do. No, no. But does does that does this one give give you the option to do that though? No. Oh. No, you have to put up with their artwork or no artwork. Oh, I see. Well, that's a bit frustrating. Didn't know about that. They will probably release a, a second edition. You know, there's, there's no. It will either be a second shouldn't. edition or DLC. Yeah. Uh, I was disappointed. There's no unlockables in the way of hidden games or anything no because i i thought to myself it comes to 30 games and i went through the the library i thought to myself is there 30 games so i counted them all and there was mm. but at the end of the screen you've got this kind of you know this sort of fenced off door as it were thinking oh maybe if you unlock something there'll be something within that door you know the exit as it were i suppose yeah um because all the the menu screens look a bit like something from bioshock don't they mm. i thought that was interesting but would yeah, you, as, would as... you kindly put some secret games on there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put Beetlejuice on there. Yeah, <laughs> fucking terrible game. Would you put John Elway's quarterback? <laughs> well, folks, you know me and Larry. You know we highly recommend you you pick it up. It's super it is. Cheap. It's an absolute bargain now. You can get it for next to nothing. Yeah, exactly. I so mean... you've got no excuse. <laughs> exactly, no excuse indeed. The emulation is perfect. Picture's really nice. The sound is really good. And most of the games are very easy to pick up and play. Some games will be a little bit confusing. I mean, I was like, with the Spectrum titles, I was like, what the hell am I, what the hell am I doing? Well, I that was like 99% of Spectrum games anyway. You're just sitting <laughs> and go, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> just try your luck. You, you know? just sort of wander around aimlessly until you die. And like, oh, I'll go on the next one. <laughs> That's what I did when I first played it. I was like, right, no, that game's <laughs> no, weird. No, next one. Yeah. Well, oh, <laughs> another bloody one. Next one. <laughs> well, folks, hope you enjoyed the review, and uh, also you can check out Larry's channel in the description box below. But um, I'm sure me and Larry will be doing some more video game reviews in the future. I hopefully yes. Until until he goes, over... <laughs> it jumps past me and subscribers, and he thinks I'm not good enough to talk to anymore. Oh, shush your face! Though. That'll <laughs> take about a year or two to do that. About a week now, in my way. <laughs> <laughs> take care, everyone, and goodbye. Goodbye. If you enjoyed the video, you can find more on my YouTube channel, and also you can follow me on Twitter. If you want to help support the channel, you can donate through Patreon and receive monthly perks such as updates on the latest news on my channel, early access to reviews and commentaries before they go live on YouTube. Even the smallest donation can help keep this channel going. Thank you.